Hi everyone, Agnes here continuing on today with the Little Blue Ho'oponopono book from Ulrich E. Dupree and this is part eight today and we are well over the halfway mark with a little book. Okay, so continuing our study with Ho'oponopono. Today it goes like this, humankind spirit of God's spirit. We are far more than this physical body. We are also far more than our thoughts. We are not this body, but we have this body. We are not our thoughts, but we have thoughts. And even they are frequently not our own, but rather a reflection of the headlines of a huge daily newspaper. For example, we, you and I, animals and plants are spiritual beings. The core of our true identity is divine. It is that which does not age, but always was and ever will be. In Hebrew, this immaterial divine spark is called Odem, and in Sanskrit, Atma. The Huna concept is expressed Cain, spirit of God's spirit, just as a drop of water from the ocean possesses all the chemical properties and elements of the ocean, so too in our pure consciousness we have all the qualities of God, though only in small measure. In quality we are like God, but in quantity we are different. Thus, you and I are not material beings who have a spiritual experience. On the contrary, by our nature we are non-physical spiritual beings who have a material experience and we all find ourselves on a common journey. The world is what we believe it to be. Imagine that you are stuck in a traffic jam. If you have no important and pressing goal in mind, you can contemplate the matter in a relaxed fashion. Admittedly, if your work, relationship, or even someone's life were at stake, the matter would look quite different. For one person, a traffic jam can be a saving grace. For another, a complete catastrophe. From a Buddhist point of view, every situation, event, and object is essentially empty. Everything gains meaning by our contemplating it. On that note, I'm going to put two YouTubes down below. First, well, it's a playlist, the interpretation playlist, because that goes into more depth about this. And also, Morty Lefko did a fantastic YouTube called stop your suffering it was a TED talk and it was about how we interpret things and how we assign meaning to things but they are virtually neutral it is our meaning that we assign to it so that too will probably help you if you're suffering with something that someone did or someone said and how you interpreted it and what it caused you inside if it was negative so back around to this Ah, oh, where was I? Our world is what we think it is. Our world is subjective. It is clear to us that the world is far more than we, with our limited senses, can perceive. The ranges and perceptive spectrum of our eyes, ears, nose, skin, and tongue are limited and individually different. Simultaneously, our brain filters only that which appears important to us and our cultural conditioning from the flood of information and mob of data reaching us. The world works on us and we sense reality as a result of our past experiences. This past, our thoughts and feelings, our learning opinions and their interpretations all form our world. From truth there is formed a reality, one that operates on us. You are today where your thoughts have brought you and tomorrow you will be where your thoughts will bring you. Okay, so continuing on a little bit more. With every thought and every word we create our future. Good sentence, I'm going to read it again. With every thought and every word we create our future. If we think lovingly and sympathetically, we are the co-creators of the harmonious future. Thoughts full of doubt, aversion and bitterness will regulate us to be the co-creators of a gloomy future. Thoughts and words of love and forgiveness raise the vibrations. Thoughts of worthlessness and condemnation lower the vibrations. 
It remains up to us to decide which film we enjoy, what we like eating, and what we believe, and where we work. So that brings us to the end of part eight, and I will see you in the next part, which will be part nine.